Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. You know, I really didn't plan to make a video today, but apparently I kicked a hornet's nest yesterday with my last video, and I'm going to use what happened as a case study to show why Comicsgate is going to win in the end. And I'll have to say right off the bat that Comicsgate might not win in the way that you or I might personally want it to win, and it might not win under the moniker of Comicsgate, and it might not win very soon. It might take a while, but it's still going to win. And I'm just going to use what happened as just a case study to show why this is the case. So I'll explain to you what happened. Yesterday, I put out a video about crowdfunded campaigns because I like to support our independent comic producers. I've done so since the first of my channel. So I picked out 11 campaigns. And the way that I picked them out was I simply looked at what people were buying on Twitter that were posting that they were buying it. You know, people who follow me and people who I follow. I just looked at what everybody was looking at and talking about. And so there was good word of mouth about it. So I picked out these 11 campaigns that people were talking about. And I did. That's pretty much all I did. I looked at their campaigns themselves. I looked at the art and I did a video about those 11 campaigns. Now, I basically put up the video and then just let it be. I didn't come back to my computer for like six or seven hours afterwards, you know, and I just went on to see how the video was doing. And it actually wasn't doing very well, even for me. It only had about 200 views, so that's still not very great, even for me. I mean, that's low for your big channels, I'm sure, to say the least. But when I went onto my Twitter, because I don't use the Twitter very much, I don't use Twitter very much, Yeah, even say the Twitter, yeah, that shows you how much I use Twitter, right? Um, but I post all of my videos on Twitter because, well, I just like to get it out there on Twitter. But at the same time, I also think it's kind of rude to talk about someone behind their back. So whenever I talk about someone in my videos, I always tag them in the, the tweet that I actually put up. So if I'm talking about Richard Meyer in my video, then I just tag Richard Meyer in the tweet. And if I talk about Cena Grace, I tag Cena Grace. If I talk about Sana Amanat, I tag Sana Amanat. So what I did with these 11 crowdfunded campaigns was that I found someone to tag for each one of them and I tag them in this tweet. And with all of my videos and with all of my tweets that I use for my videos, I put the hashtag Comicsgate next to it. Now, what happened was two of these people that were running these crowdfunded campaigns did not want to be part of what I was putting out there for advertising basically for them. So one of them said politely and one of them said not so politely that I was part of a hate group with Comicsgate and they did not want to be associated with a hate group. Thank you very much. So that's what happened. And so when I went on to my Twitter page, I had 99 plus notifications, all right? And it only goes up to 99 plus, by the way. And just to let you know, I usually get like one or two a week. So I didn't know what in the world was going on. So I clicked on it and it turned out to be more like 300 to 400 notifications. And they kept on rolling in. There was probably another 200 that came in before I closed my computer down. So I would say close to 600 yesterday and notifications would be not only replies but every retweet and every like I got to see everything from this thread that I had started because these two guys who didn't want to be a part of this and said I'm part of a hate movement well their supporters came out in droves of the anti comics gate side and started to just pile on and then the people that were actually tagged in this that were on the comics gate side where well, they saw what was going on and they started to reply so I'm going to use this Twitter feed that I started with my video as a case study to show you why Comicsgate is going to win. And it boils down to, I would say, the fact that when you look at everything, and I'm going to break this down a little bit, you'll see that the people on the anti Comicsgate side, they are making the center of their movement political. Whereas the people on the Comicsgate side, they are making the center of their movement economic. We'll say they self-identify that way. It doesn't matter what the other side identifies them as. They'll self-identify, to use the language of the left, as that. So the Comicsgate side 
it self-identifies as economic. And when I say economic, I use that in a very broad sense here. I will say including even an economy of ideas. That is to say, we want competition even of ideas so that, you know, the best idea wins and we get the best idea out there. The best comic wins, we keep the best comic out there. The best writer, the best artist wins, we keep those people out there, you know. And not just that, but also the money. You know, and it boils down to money in a lot of cases. So here's the thing. After these, we'll say roughly 600 notifications that I went through them all, and I noticed a pattern of just through the whole thing. It eventually went about 50-50 for replies. So about half of the replies were from your anti-comics gate side, and about half of your replies were from the comics gate side. Now, when you look at the replies, though, you'll see, of course, that the anti-comics gate side were revolving around politics, pure and simple. They would say, you're a hate group. You're a hate group. You're a hate group. This is what would come out of their mouths. And the comics gate side would say, no, we just want the best product for our money. We just want there to be a competition of ideas. This is what the comics gate side would say. And at the same time, the anti-comics gate side people, you know, they would say to the people that were applying to them, and it didn't matter if they were minorities or not, because some of these crowdfunded people that were on the comics gate side said, you know, I'm a minority and I'm supporting comics gate. They would say to them, well, you're just deluded. You're a beard for these people who are promoting hate. Okay, so that was their reply. See, this is a political reply. This is revolving around politics, whereas the people on the comics gate side would say, no, I am supporting someone who I actually think deserves the money. And that's what it boiled down to. And that's what a lot of this boiled down to. So to break it down even more, not just the replies, but if you look at the tweets and the retweets, okay? Now for the tweets and the retweets, I would say that five to one, the anti-comics gay side won hands down with the tweets and the retweets and the likes. Five to one, I'd say. Okay, so we have that. But on the other hand, if you look at the amount of people who actually said in the replies, okay, I'm going to actually support you on this side because of what's going on here. I would say five to one, the people on the Comics Gate side won that, hands down. The people who were on the anti-Comics Gate side were very good about retweeting, were very good about liking things, but were very poor about actually supporting the people out there who are independent comic creators. And again, I'm just taking this as a case study. I'm only focusing on what happened here in this thread. Whereas the people on the Comics Gate side said, yeah, look, you're concerned with your customer. So I'm going to support you. It's like five to one. And that's great. I'm glad that these people are actually getting some support from what I did. At the same time, we have to remember that I'm looking at my video and there's only about 200 views on it at that point. So we got, you know, 600 notifications. Obviously the people on the other side are not actually watching my video. <laughs> I know some of them are. I have some of them that actually subscribe to me. And, you know, I don't agree with them on a lot of things, but they seem to be just well enough and nice enough people that they'll have a discussion with you. But most of these people that are on Twitter, no, they don't care. And that, again, that's a political move. But the whole point is, we're talking about selling comics here. That's what it boils down to. We're talking about selling comics. And the people on the other side are very willing to use political means, right? And not only that, I would say tweeting and liking things, that's virtue signaling. So that's a political end right there. That's a political means. You're concentrating on the political. At the same time, when you are saying, you're a part of a hate group and all of this other stuff, that's also political. As I've been saying in a bunch of my older videos that that's a part of shaming. What they're trying to do is to shame you into not supporting the comics gate side. And that shaming, that's a political thing. They use the social and the political to do that. All right, where again, you have the people on the comics gate side. They're just saying, listen, we just want good comics. We just want the most for our money. So again, the people on the comics gate side are the one who, ones who are concentrating on this economically. And we're talking about the sale of comics. So these other people on the other side, they can virtue signal all they want. They can be political all they want. It's not 
doing anybody any good to put food in their belly. It's not going to save even the independent comic creators. It's not, whereas the comic gay people are. Now, here's the funny thing. Here's the really funny thing. These two guys who didn't want me to actually put them in the video, you know what they did? Okay, here's what they did. They said, I don't want to be part of what you're putting out there because it has hashtag comicsgate attached to it and that's a hate movement. I don't want to be part of that. But one of the guys kept on retweeting in this thread under the hashtag comicsgate his campaign over and over and over again. At least six times. Last time I checked, at least six times. He kept on reposting it saying, hey, go buy my book. So he knows that this breaks down to economics. He knows that comes down to brass tacks, it's how many books sell. That's what he, he knows it. And the second guy, you know, because both of them said, okay, I don't want you doing this for me. And I said very politely back to both of them, I said, so note it, I'll take you off the list of the comics that I'm promoting and I won't put you on there anymore. If you want it that way, then that's what I'll do. I will just bow to your wishes to take you off the list. It's fine by me. So the thing is that first guy, you know, he kept on retweeting. The second guy, when I said that to him, you know, I'll take you off the list, he said, oh no, 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 you can continue to promote my book. Just don't use the hashtag comicsgate next to it. <laughs> so again, here you have this guy and he knows it comes down to economics. He knows it comes down to brass tacks. All right, he knows. I mean, if you're part of the big two, if you're part of Marvel or DC, you know, you can do all that virtue signaling and all that kind of stuff because you have the giant pot of money behind you and not care about the economics. But when you have your independent comic creators, look, they know that if they want to fill their stomachs, they need customers. But at the same time, they're saying, you know what? I don't want you people as customers on the Comicsgate side. And that's why Comicsgate is going to win. And I know that a lot of people have already gone over this, but that's why Comicsgate is going to win. Here's just a perfect example, a case study, why it's going to win. Because you had the people on the anti Comicsgate side, these two guys, and their campaigns, and they kept on saying, you know what? I choose my customers. I don't want some people as customers. Whereas you had the people on the Comicsgate side saying, hey, go check out my book. I don't care what side you're on, go check out my book. You know, I want you to actually buy my book. Don't care about your politics just care. I just care about good comics. Go buy my book. And that's the thing. It all boils down to economics. And even the creators know that in the back of their mind. And I would say even the anti-comics gate people know that in the back of their mind. That's why they're trying to shame you into stop buying these things. Because one of the common threads in this little discussion was, well, all you're doing is giving money to the leaders of comics gate which by the way, they would classify as Ethan Van Skyver and Richard Meyer. They're just saying, well, you're just giving money to these people. You're just forking over money to them. So they know in the back of their minds that they don't want you spending money on these things. They know even though they're trying to do everything politically and they're supporting things politically that they're really worried about how much money you are spending on Comics Gate Comics. They are really worried about that because even they know in the back of their mind it's going to boil down to brass tacks whose comic gets sold the most. And that's what it is. And the funniest thing I think that I found was that I had these people say to me, well, two, two things. They would say, you're an idiot. You didn't even do your research. And I'm thinking to myself, no. I just looked at what people were buying, what people weren't buying. I'm not going to go through a purity test for everybody I put in my tweets. I don't care about triggering people. You know, I care about being polite, but I don't care if I trigger people. I'm not going to do research to find out who I'm going to trigger with my tweet before I do every tweet. That's ridiculous. So that's one of the things I found ridiculous. But the other thing that I found was quite ridiculous was the fact that they kept on saying, ha ha, look, you promoted this book and it's an anti comics gate book and it's working against you to promote it. No, it's not working against me to promote it. I'm promoting everybody's book. If it looks like it's good and it deserves to be out there, I'm going to promote it because I want the economic outcome. That is to say, I want everybody to compete and we'll see who does better and whoever does better wins. That's the way the economic system works. That's the way it should work. That We'll put both books out there, both kinds of books. And yes, I want both to sell. Yes, I want both 
to be sold on both sides, and we'll see which one does better, and therefore we'll see which one wins. But these people don't get that. They think that I'm an idiot because I'm promoting something that's on the other side. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't care what side it's on. I want people to buy it to see if it's a good product. That's what I want. So again, it just boils down to, yes, we on the comic skate side, we self-identify as being a movement centered around economics. And we put our money where our mouth is. Whereas the people on the other side, they're centering around politics and they're making the whole thing about politics and they're ignoring the fact that the people on the front lines need to have their bellies filled and they're not getting that. And so they're going to lose. Anyway, I thought it was fascinating what happened the other day. I'm gonna, I didn't very even checked Twitter today to see how many notifications I had today. Hopefully it's died down a little bit. All right, well, if you found this interesting at all, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right hand corner of your screen to subscribe and leave me a comment. Tell me if you actually saw this going on on Twitter. Just let me know. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.